those are pretty out. Okay, thanks. All right, so um, we're reopening the hearing at 6.35 for the BCA, and um, we are inviting the inspection committee to present its report. So the inspection committee was Jan, Chris, and John. And John. Okay. So I will give you the floor to present your report. Sarah, are we waiting for that to be printed out? Uh, yeah. Well, I just, I, I, would, I, I can't do everything. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, she's just printing out the uh, she's printing out the minutes from the last. In case I need to like look at something. People that McCann's. Mr. McCann is here. Do you guys have yeah. reports? John is here, but his lawyer isn't. This, this is isn't complete though. You can print the one I just said. John. John. All right. Are you waiting for uh, your representative? No, uh, he wasn't available tonight, so okay. I'm just going to do it by myself. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This, this wasn't a closed. The SBA wasn't a closed thing last time. No. No. The, the BCA. Okay. okay. I mean, we can start. It wasn't what? Well, I thought it was like a closed a meeting year. last time. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, part of it. Part of it was, oh, I think. Yeah. But yeah, that's, not that's this part. Oh, there yeah. it is. There should be something with a link to a document that you should have permission to. Oh, I see. I could share it with that address immediately, too. Yeah, can you do that? Yeah, give me one second. Um, Here's Sarah. this. You liking it so far? Love it. No, it, you it do? operates better with a Gmail address. Than I need a job. <laughs> so bored. You don't have a job? I don't. Yeah. But what I just, are you looking I for? I've Sarah done sales and marketing for 30 years. Yeah. I thought I was safe because I was like so you the lost star. Your job? No, no. I gave it up to go to Puerto Vallarta two years ago, like two years after COVID. Yeah. Um, I'd been like in Puerto Vallarta as in the love boat? Well, who gives you an eight week vacation? So who are you? I'd been there for it? six years. It's ready to move on. I figured I'd take and you have a year off, or you're just not. And no, I've been looking for the last year, and I'm not getting interviews. I, so, yeah. I, I, I forgot I was absolutely going to do this. That, there is that, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm finding that. Yeah, that's Ooh, awful. Yeah. Do we well, want to wait you, on you this until people have printed copies, or what do you want to do? Um, well, I, I really just wanted to, um, I have the minutes here, it's fine. So John and, um, yeah, why don't you guys give your presentation? Are you going to do it over there? Does Sarah have to be here to take the notes? Oh, she just yeah, went down. Okay, sorry, Sarah just left. Yeah, she's very So we're going to wait for Sarah. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, you have to yeah. I've been off for jobs in what I've done for 30 years. Um, well, there's a lot of people who do okay. second careers. I'm good at making money for people. I was hoping to go to the nonprofit sector and do fundraising versus yeah. sales, but. Well, there might be someone looking for grant writers. I'm better with people. <laughs> <laughs> like donor, like development, yeah, like raising money, fine, yeah, yeah, cool. that's what I'm good at. Right Except for me, the last two years. <laughs> where, where did Sarah go? She, she went, went downstairs to, to get out print out the some. Oh. That we okay. can be submitted. No new exhibits at this stage, correct? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. You have it. You have it. Right. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Go. Anybody want to share with me? Yeah, sure. You know, I got to see the copy. Okay, so Sarah, I'll give it to you afterwards if you want. Yes, I'm going to do that. Sorry? I can give this to you after. Oh, okay, I got it on my phone. Oh, you got it. All right, so when Sarah sits down and is, has her hand Thank on the typewriter. You. Thank you. Typewriter. The keyboard. <laughs> okay, you guys may begin. Yeah, you want to, all right, sure. So I'll start off. Right. Um, so just for my clarification, who's on the board of civil authority here? Just so I know who is and who isn't. I guess uh, you guys are. Vic too, is. Right? Yep, yeah, we all are. Yeah. All right. So. And, and Peter. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and yeah. Sarah's recusing. Okay. And Peter, thanks. Okay, so yeah, we went over to the property on Tuesday, March 26th in the evening. It, uh, it, some of the snow had gone away, but it was still pretty snow covered. So not knowing what these reports are supposed to look like, um, just kind of took some notes on what our observations were um, and noted because I at least had looked also on the town property map. So I had the overview of what the borders roughly looked like. It wasn't 100% clear where the borders actually were, but you know we had a, like a very good general idea of it. And so you know we noted that the property is uh, gently sloped uh, from north to south. It's got like a nice southern exposure, kind of rectangular property. Um, slopes downhill from Portal Road, almost in a due southward direction. Uh, it's mostly planted with rows of grapevines um, that are wired up. There are some small areas of rock outcroppings, um, but it's, it's mostly planted, um, roughly about two thirds. Um, we noticed uh, brook and running water, but don't know if that was on the property on the other side of, of the property line, but it seemed about over there. Um, was almost entirely cleared, a couple standalone trees, and then there were some wooded areas around the border. But again, we don't know. I, it was pretty clear that the property didn't go too far into the woods. Um, whether it went into the woods at all, we're not positive. Maybe we could invite that information later on. Um, and then the only access to the property that we observed was what appeared to be a shared driveway from the house that um, that it was carved off of. And there was some you know basic kind of farming equipment parked over there, and it was a rough driveway there. And um, it was pretty clear that if you know the new owner wanted to put an access down off portal, there'd be an amount of excavating and fill work needed because it was a it's a pretty rough drop off from Portal Road onto the property. Um, okay, so then, uh, Jan, do you want to add? That was kind of my observations, just as neutral as possible. Um, the grade on the land is 1.0, which um, is low considering the open area, <clears throat> the gentle slope, the access, and view. Um, if increased appropriately, the property value would rise. So I, I wonder if you want to give a little context on that because I had never heard of the grade of land in this context before. So you explained Middlesex it to me. grades, as the listers know and do, um, they grade the the value of the land depending on those priorities there, um, the access, the view, um, the um, the accessibility. Um, and so the entire town's land is graded from, it really starts at 1.0, but nobody's there, and goes all the way up to 2. <clears throat> and so this land is graded at 1.0, which is kind of considered average. And um, we concluded that we thought it was above average. Um, overall, we feel this property was bought at below value, and if it went on the market today, would sell at a substantially higher price. And then okay. Chris concludes. And we also, um, since the listers use the CLA formula that they're given, and it applies to all the properties that are in Middlesex, that we were not going, to, we we're recommending that we don't upset that particular methodology for valuing uh, the fair market value of the land. 
uh, in this instance, or probably in any instance, but this was our case. So we would not, but we're recommending that we do not upset that methodology, which the, uh, there's no dispute that the, um, as, uh, that I'm aware of, that the list has faithfully applied that calculation. Um, um, so, but they just, there was a dispute with whether they should have applied that calculation or that methodology. So, uh, we're recommending that the um, listers' conclusions be upheld. Okay. We support their conclusions. Okay. So, the listers have supported their conclusion, and we now invite final questions from the BCA members about this to the listers. This has I mean, to be to the listers, not to I think, yes, because the appellant still gets a chance to talk. Right, but could I ask the appellant questions? Um, could I ask general questions and see well, if not, anyone knows uh, the answers? Yes. Um, invite final, yeah, you're, you're on the BCA. Right. So, yes, I would <laughs> say you can ask some like questions. I'll allow right. you to ask questions. All right, so. thanks. So I just had, and I think those will be directed to the appellant, but if anyone you know knows the answers with certainty, please chime in. Um, so my understanding is here, the, the property was carved off. It was in current use, like fully, right? Yes. Um, and was that application from the old dairy farming days, or did you have to apply for current use under the lease that you had when you okay. established the vines? So first of all, I never applied for current lease. So what happened was when we leased this property from originally Eugene Jocelyn, um, the son Randy Jocelyn came in and said, how can I save my father some property taxes? Can I, can I list your land in current use? Mm -hmm. And because I was a farmer who was making more than $2,000 in revenue from the farming operation, mm -hmm. um, that was feasible. So I submitted to him my income tax for the current year. He put it into current use mm -hmm. and um, he reaped the benefits of the property reduction yep. while I still paid the full the value lease, of the lease. Okay. Um, so that, that answers that one, if I could move yes. on. So then it's by operation of law that that's subdivided out. It's like automatically withdrawn or removed from the program. So and, and let me just follow okay. up with that. Because yes. so, that seems odd, but it wouldn't surprise me because there's a lot of odd things in state law that if you're using the property for the exact same purpose, that it's automatically kicked out. But and then you would have to reapply, which I imagine you I plan did. on doing or have already done. I did actually. So it, so then my it. further question, if you've researched this or looked into it or your attorney has, is is there um, you know for these circumstances, which I I got to imagine is not unique. If you're the first Vermonter who's ever bought I think a property, I am. are you serious? No, <laughs> that's ever bought land that you were yeah. leasing for the exact same agricultural use. Does the state in statute or regulation or administratively have a process for abating that land use change tax or you know refunding it when they see that in good faith it's coming? Like, is there a process for that? Have you researched that? I have all the answers for you. Awesome. <laughs> it's long, Okay. it's drawn out, and we actually are appealing to the state of Vermont as mm -hmm. well. Um, so the answer is, um, first of all, point one, the land was subdivided by Randy Jocelyn a year prior to me buying it. Mm -hmm. So it got kicked out of current use at that point. Okay. He reapplied to put it back into current use. So the subdivision was done. So did he pay the penalty, or is that so what's that's being just passed it. to because, you? Because because he is the same family. Mm -hmm. This is what the Vermont law is so messed up on. Yeah. Because he's family, mm -hmm. he does not invoke the get a, a penalty on this huh. transition. Yeah. Okay. So now a year has gone by. We are finally in the process of buying the property. And I will go back first of all. So we had a contract, a lease contract with Eugene Jocelyn that said that they shall sell the property to us in 2020 for, for unimproved farmland. 
we appraise that value at $26,000. When Eugene Joslin passed away, the son came back and said, I'm not selling you that land for $26,000. Yeah. So we had to unfortunately get our attorneys involved um, because in front of unapproved farmland was the words fair market value, which by statute in Vermont, and my, my original attorney didn't understand this when we wrote the contract, that supersedes any other terms. So we had to purchase this value at 116500 which at that time was what was considered fair market value of the land. When we purchased it from them, it got kicked out of land use, uh, out of current use at, again, and I had 30 days to reapply. We applied, reapplied within that 30 days. Um, and and I, it, this was a, now almost a year ago, um, I did come in and speak to someone here at the town, Brooks, and I, and I wanna say it was one of the listers, but I can't quite remember. Um, I said, I haven't seen a tax bill yet. What's going on? And I explained to them that I had applied for current use, um, and I still today don't have a tax bill for this property. Um, so I don't know where we stand in that. Um, and, but you have received the assessment from the state for land use change tax? Correct. Okay. So here's, here's the crazy part of Vermont law. And it's very ambiguous, and this is why we're appealing it. And, and there are three Supreme Court cases that support our theory. Um, because the land is under 25 acres, even though you're continuing to farm it, it is automatically considered developed. And that word is used loosely. Um, Developed means a piece of land that can or will be built as a single family residence. Um, never was our intention, which is why we've been working for almost a year and a half now with Vermont Land Trust to conserve this land as agricultural land. Um, with that said, being conserved with Vermont Land Trust and ag business, we could still put up a winery and tasting room because that is what we consider an accessory on farm business. Okay. Um, so it still doesn't fall under the, the words development. If that property was 25 acres and above, we wouldn't even be having this discussion. Mm -hmm. So there's this weird 25 acre number. And I've actually approached the state tax department, I approached the legislators about it, and they don't even understand why the 25 acre is in there. If it's farming, it's farming. If it's not, it's not. So this is why we are appealing with the state of Vermont. Um, however, the fact is that we purchased it for 116500 it was reassessed by Middlesex and then again by the state as 147. Right. Um, that puts us at a higher tax bracket for this penalty. Right. Yeah. So if I was to have to pay this penalty at 116,500, we're talking about eleven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. At this value of 147,000, I'm talking fifteen thousand dollars. So for a small farmer who's just trying to get going, this is a substantial amount of money that I have to pay out. I also believe that because I did not reap the benefits of the current use with the reduced property tax, it shouldn't be on the new owner, it should be on the person who sold the property, which again is another state right. law issue that is out there. Okay. Uh, and so my memory from last week and from reading the documents you submitted is that your your appeal is the grievance is really on the land use change tax. It's not so much on the ongoing value of the property because when you get that into current use, that within a year or maybe less, 
that'll be reduced and you'll be paying a, a reasonable and fair amount. Yeah, right. it's, it's not yeah. about what I'm going to be paying a year from now to the town of Middlesex. Mm -hmm. It's about what I'm being asked to pay now yeah. because of the penalty under the state right. statute. And so that appeal is pending. It's been filed with the department. It has. And they didn't, uh, it sounds, is it going to court, do you know? Is it going to a formal hearing? Um, or as of right it? now, they're, the state is still reviewing it. Okay. And my understanding is that could take up to six months. Okay. Um, I do know also that there is a land use change going through the um, legislative right now that's mm -hmm. redefining the word development. Mm -hmm. If that passes before the appeal is finished, then this could all be a moot point. Right. Yeah. But and if the appeal is found in your favor, it's a moot point as well. Correct. Right? Because that would be just like, you know, the end finding would be this has been farmland the whole time, nothing's right. changed. It's only because of the wording of the statutes that the yearly property tax between one hundred sixteen five and one hundred forty seven thousand yeah. is minor yeah. compared to the penalty that I'm going to have to pay yeah. mm -hmm. if I have to pay this fee. Understood. That answers all my questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, John. Um, Can both, I just have both a tax order for John. John, the reason you haven't gotten a tax bill is because that property changed hands in June of twenty twenty three. It's what exists on April 1st of any year. Those are, so you can look forward to a tax bill this July. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so you have a question? Well, I've got just got after, after the last meeting, I actually reached out to Ken Brown, who's now the head one that runs current use, just on uh, Mr. McCain's behalf. And he said that whenever land is subdivided, regardless of acreage, a penalty exists. So even if because I had asked, I said, would the, the state waive it? Because he's putting it back, it's, it's agriculture. And they said, still appears to be a developable property when it's subdivided. So regardless, the penalty would still exist. But if it was over 25 acres, that wouldn't, yeah, that wouldn't, have that wouldn't right. trigger. Yeah. And if you were related, it wouldn't trigger. And it, yeah. if I was related, it wouldn't, wouldn't trigger. <laughs> right. So again, the, the person who is trying to create a piece of farmland to, to to maintain Vermont's agricultural commodity is being penalized heavily on this. But you also have this uh, potentially, as you're as you're going through this appeal, you also have the support of the Vermont Land Trust that maybe other places don't have, and that would be in your situation, like um, so, from what Shelley's saying. So yeah. So well, two things, right? Vermont Land Trust is helping with paying the portion of the value of the 116.5, but now I'm also locked into an easement. So there are certain things that we had to put into a contract prior to signing with the Vermont Land Trust, so nothing can change at that point forward. So no house could ever be put on it. Um, it can only have farm-related buildings. And, and certainly there are other stipulations that Vermont Land Trust. So we are literally um, getting in bed with the devil to save on 116000 where we thought we were going to pay 26000 Gotcha. Okay, are there any final questions from the BCA um, for the um, inspection committee right now? Because we... John can still have a moment to talk if he needs to. I do have other things I'd like yeah. to mention as well. And, and I, have a question. I mean, we can't do anything about a state imposed penalty here, yeah. can we? Except for lowering the price so that he pays less on the penalty. That's what okay, he's that, asked. Okay, so that's it. So the difference that's between the 11000 and the 15000 yes. is what you're looking he's still at. Okay. He still so knows he'd have to pay less. I'm going to recommend that you guys just follow the procedure yes. so that things don't yeah. go back and forth. Yeah, gotcha. Um, okay, so any other questions from the BCA? Okay, so now, um, John, you can Whoa, make, please. oh, yep, sorry, Peter. Peter. So I, I, this isn't a question, this, this is more of a comment, but um, I am very concerned that, and I, I regret the situation, we're not responsible for the state laws, we're not responsible for penalties, we're not responsible for any of that, and what we're being asked to do is violate our normal appraisal process, which we use for all land in Middlesex, 
just because of this particular yeah. situation. I think that's a bad precedent for us to do. I think that's I something that to the landowner, all that. Yeah, that's for the deliberation, Peter. We can talk about that oh, in the okay. deliberation. Right. Sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Um, okay, so John, you may have some final comments. I do. Um, as far as the brook, um, the brook is not on our property. Um, that is on Ethan, uh, Elijah Hawk's property. Um, we do have, and, and so as far as, two things, as far as your grading calculation. So the town of Middlesex decided that they wanted to put a culvert right into the middle of our top of our vineyard. So the water now from the runoff drains onto our vineyard and saturates the top. So we ended up having to pay um, Picard, John Picard, to come in and ditch a dig, uh, dig a ditch from that culvert to divert the water down through. So you may have seen what you thought was a brook, mm -hmm. but that is actually a ditch that was put in by us to divert water away from our grapevines. Um, second of all, we do, sh it's in the deed that we have the right as an easement to use the driveway that you currently saw. Um, when and if we put a new driveway in, that gets removed from the deed. I have gotten an estimate from contractors at the cost of putting in a new driveway from Porter Road, because of the steepness and everything, it's $140,000. Okay, so again, I know you, you grade this property based on what you see, but there's a lot of underlying issues that you cannot see. And I'm happy to submit that, that estimate at some point if, if this is how the procedure works. Um, but there are there are a lot of um, expenses that um, have to come out of my pocket to in order to make this property work the way we want it to work. May I see? Um, yeah, I just wanted. To, is there anything more that you want to add? Um, I just wanted to to reiterate about the brook that or whatever you saw is not on our property, okay. and and the cost of installing a new driveway onto the property. Okay, so now invite final comments from the listers. That's you. I'm not a listener. No, no. Oh, you're not a listener. Yeah, you're a listener. There you go. <laughs> okay. So I can't say anything. Well, um, we had some questions up above. What, what else would you like to say, Jan? Well, my one comment is everybody has to put in a driveway, and driveways are very expensive. Right. Okay. But um, I have a question in terms of taxes for the town. When a piece of land is conserved by um, land trust, do we still get our due taxes, or is it reduced? You, you still get some taxes. It's still get tax on it. Yeah, 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 you'll get taxes. On the full 147 or whatever it's appraised at. I don't know about that. That wouldn't but be what the current taxes. use, no. Until the townwide reappraisal is done, it would be at what we it estimated it at on our cost sheet. Shelly, I think what she's asking is when right. the BLT thing goes through, what yeah. will the, what, how will that affect the price of the land, of the, the, the lister's value of the land? When the what goes through? The Vermont Land Trust, if they have Vermont, if, if he sells the Well, that would be part of the deed, and I think I'd have to check with our district advisor, but I think at that time we would revisit the cost sheet. But we still get tax money for it. It's not like yeah. it's tax exempt. It may be a reduced value. Yeah. Right. The, the, that it would reduce the value yes. because it's more restricted than okay. it would otherwise right. be. But it's also going to go into current use, so it's going to be reduced. Yeah, it's going to be re sooner. Re sooner. But again, it's after yeah. April first, so this would be yeah. like right. next year's. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when I did talk to current use, they said, like Peter said, we have a, a formula that we go by that we have to go by, otherwise yeah. we'd have a line at our door. And after that part, the list of part is done. Yeah. Then it's up to the state to decide, depending on what the CLA is, to come up with the cost that they think is. Fair market value. Gotcha. And if I may have another comment? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so when we began this, the town of Middlesex 
offers this opportunity for a grievance, which under our Nick Lowe's and my attorney and my understanding is that a grievance um, can produce a change by the BCA, by the listers. Um, even though you have had protocols in the past, and, 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 and Peter's comment about we're opening up basically Pandora's box by doing this for me, I mean, what is the point of a grievance if we're never going to be able to change a process? Okay, thank you for that comment. Um, the I just want to remind everyone that the, yeah. that the us listers have it listed as 106. He bought it at 116, and the state is saying it's 146. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, so one, you guys actually can make final comments now if you want to talk yeah. more. 106 is what we well, Yeah, and I'd like to also comment that when, when we have a grievance is again to either see if there's something that can be done or explain to the resident why we came up with the figure that we did. And I, and I think that's what we yeah. tried to do mm -hmm. to both Mr. McCain and his lawyer is how we came up with that figure and how we came up with the cost of what that property would be worth. Okay. Any other comments from the listers? Okay, so hearing none, we're actually now going to close the hearing and we will, the BC is going to enter deliberative session. The last time we did this, did we have it? Yeah, we did, but we did it without the public. It's yeah, the public portion is closed now. So the public portion is closed, okay. And we will issue a written decision in writing within 15 days. Okay? So thank you for coming, Mr. McCann. And um, everybody leaves. Hey, Dorothy, can you turn off the meeting? Yeah. Everybody hey. goes, but the BCA. But Peter stays, Orca has thank to you. go. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. For all your work. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you.